everybody. Uh, today I thought we would go over your manual handling techniques uh, if you think that a dog has patella luxation. Now patella luxation generally happens uh, in the small or toy breeds um, and what happens is the patella moves outside of the groove. So the groove is the trochlear groove of the femur uh, and when it luxates Generally speaking, it moves medially out of that groove. It can do lateral, um, but it, it generally in dogs tends to move medially. Now with the um, patella luxation, there are four grades. So grade one, it can be manually luxated when you feel it, but when you take your pressure off, uh, the patella spontaneously uh, reduces. Uh, a grade two, it can be um, again manually luxated um, and then you can reduce it manually so you have to go in there and, and reduce it yourself. Um, a grade three, uh, the patella is already luxated uh, but it can be manipulated back into the groove and a grade four, the patella um, is out permanently. So it's luxated permanently and it cannot be manipulated back into place. Uh, so with those grades, look, the grades ones and the grade two, they can be treated conservatively with strengthening. Uh, sometimes the grade threes and the grade fours um, need to um, have surgical intervention on that. Um, so let me show you what it, uh, what it looks like to have a feel of the patella and try to decide what grade that patella might be. So here I have Paige's stifle, her knee. Um, and if I just support that here, you can see this sort of little bump here, which is her tibial tuberosity. If you trace just up above that, you can come across uh, the structure which to me feels like the width of a pencil that's her patella tendon and if you keep on tracking higher above up above that you'll sort of come to a point where you will find the patella now when you feel the patella you want to sort of gently pinch um, on either side um, you don't want to hold it and fixate it there but you just want to sort of feel the boundaries of the patella um, you want to get the hip in as much of a neutral position as you can and then with your fingers on either side of the patella all you're going to do is straighten the stifle out. Now in a straightened position um, if you feel the patella move or luxate it might give you a bit of an indication that the trochlear groove is very shallow so it might be a bony uh, indication of what's causing the patella luxation. Now Paige doesn't have any patella luxation so hers stays quite central which is nice. Um, if we then go to bend the stifle um, we're now starting to place a bit of stretch on the quads um, and you, again you're feeling for what that um, patella is doing. If it luxates in a uh, flexed position, um, you might you might sort of hypothesize really that the quads are really tight and they might be influencing or compressing or pulling the patella. So there are different causes for patella luxation. Sometimes uh, your hands on in the position of the stifle uh, and the hip can give you a few indications of what may be going on. Um, so that is how I assess for patella luxation.